Welcome to Zoological World today we are discuss about flounder with its remarkably thin body. The flounder truly lives up to the name of flatfish. Lying almost motionless along the sandy ocean or seafloor, the flounder fish waits patiently for a tasty meal to come by so it can feed. Its entire lifestyle and physical appearance are oriented around the bottom-dwelling habitat. This is an incredible display of evolutionary ingenuity. But due to its popularity as a cuisine, some species of flounder are in danger of population depletion. Incredible flounder facts. The technical term for the types of bottom-dwelling marine animal is a demersal fish. Some species of flounders are nicknamed the chameleons of the sea due to their ability to change colors as a means of blending in with the environment. The flounder actually resembles a typical fish upon birth. A few weeks into its life, it undergoes a profound metamorphosis to transform into a flatfish. The flounder fish probably evolved more than 50 million years ago. One fossil from that time period demonstrates that some species of flatfish had already evolved an eye on the top of the head. As a cuisine, the flounder fish is commonly broiled or grilled. Flounder scientific name The term flounder is not a true scientific name. This has often inspired quite a lot of confusion among people. Instead, it refers to many different species of flatfish that are part of four distinct families. Achirocetidae, Pleuronectidae, Paralichthyidae, and Bothidae. All of these families are classified within the order Pleuronectiformes. However, not every member of this order is a flounder, because it also includes the dabs, brills, soles, and others. Together these creatures belong to the class of ray-finned fish known as the Actinoterygii. Flounder appearance The flounder has an unusually flat appearance that's well suited for its bottom-dwelling lifestyle. To see everything above it, the flounder has two big round eyes projected from small stalks on the same side of the head. These eyes also have the ability to move independently of each other. The typical flounder specimen measures somewhere between 5 and 25 inches in length, the larger ever recorded was some 37 inches, and up to 22 pounds in weight. This doesn't quite capture its true size, however, since the flounder has a massive surface area thanks to its round or oval body. The flounder's scales act as camouflage that makes it difficult for both predators and prey to detect it against the muddy or sandy ocean bottom. Some species can actively change their color to blend in with the seabed. This has the dual purpose of also signaling the emotional state of the fish. For instance, a pale color may be a sign that the creature feels threatened. The flounder comes in a huge range of different colors and patterns, depending on the composition of the sediment in which it resides. The slate of orange, brown, green, white, or tan colors is normal. Flounder distribution Population and habitat The flounder dwells at the bottom of oceans and seas near docks, bridges, and coral reefs. Its main areas of occupancy include the tropical and temperate waters along the coasts of Europe, North America, Africa, and Asia. Some species also reside much farther north near the Arctic. It is estimated that some 30 million flounders are still alive across the entire world's ocean, but pollution, habitat change, and overfishing in the 20th and 21st century have depleted some stocks. For many species of flounder, there is not enough data to fully estimate their conservation status. But when data is known, the vast majority of species appear to be in good health. The conservation tracker IUCN Red List believes that they are of least concern. However, the continued depletion of fish stocks may threaten many species in the future. In the United States, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is the main governmental body in charge of carefully managing flounder numbers. The administration uses scientific data to determine how much of the flounder population can be harvested for the following year, and then it allocates resources accordingly between commercial and recreational catches to ensure that enough stocks are present to repopulate the waters.